Hey guys, welcome back. So today, I picked up another rigid generator. This one is 6800 continuous watts, 5800 surge, and it's powered by this Yamaha MZ360. Uh, it's a decent machine. I've worked on a few of these in the past. Not this exact model, but close enough. Anyway, they generally suffer from three pretty major issues. The first one is more cosmetic. This orange paint on the frame rails typically rusts and flakes off pretty easily. I've picked up at least two that were in terrible condition. And this one, although it is dirty, there's no rust, no flaking paint, no bubbles. So uh, we're good there. The other issue is the battery. Not a big deal, but pretty much any generator I get has a bad battery. So this one's no different. Get nothing from that electric start. And lastly is the tank. This thing is metal. And you can probably see there is fuel in there. That's bad. Now, I don't see any rust, but it is kind of hard to see because the fuel inlet's right above here. And if there was any water in the system, it would be down at the bottom here. And I can only see about halfway, so there could be some water in there and rust. And without a boroscope, it's really hard to tell. I think what I'm gonna do is just test the fuel flow. In the other generators I got that were rusted out, fuel would not flow because of the rust. So if it flows well, then we're probably in good shape. Now, there wasn't too much detail on the listing other than generator for sale. And uh, I didn't ask too many questions because it was only listed at $85. And uh, that's a steal. Did I mention it came with a cord? The cord is probably worth that alone. So yeah, I'm not complaining. Anyway, when I went to go pick it up, the seller did add a little bit of information. He said he bought this in the aftermath of Hurricane Sandy. And that was the first and last time he used it. And it ran great. He even added that he powered his dryer with it, which uh, made me cringe a bit. This generator, although it is powerful, is rated only at 28.3 continuous amps at 240 volts. And that dryer would have been pushing it to its limit. So hopefully there's no damage to the power head. I guess we won't know until we try starting it. Now, there is hope for the carburetor. I see the fuel valve is in the off position and the seller you know owned a motorcycle and a boat so i'd like to think he knows how to store engines hopefully that's the case here and i did double check this governor linkage and the throttle plate is not frozen so it should be safe to start assuming the carb is capable of starting this engine i think i'm going to get you set up in a stand see if that old fuel will come out put some fresh stuff in and maybe we'll try the easy thing and just bring it outside and pull that cord and see what it does. It's going to be pretty hard to get the fuel line off the carburetor without taking the air box off. And I don't want to do that unless I know we have to clean that carb. So I'm going to replace the fuel filter anyway. So I think I'll just remove the clamp and the line here and drain it from this location. I think we made out pretty well. We got good fuel flow. I don't see any water in there and uh, no rust either. So let me get the rest of that out, put some fresh stuff in. We do have a leak. So I'm gonna get this cover off and uh, see what's going on.
The fuel lines look okay, it's just the valve. Luckily, I think I have another one of these. So unfortunately, this other valve I have is the tiniest bit larger in diameter. So when it goes in, it goes all the way in, but it's such a tight fit that you can't turn it. First, I thought it was just it wasn't going in all the way because it does need to clear right there, but that is not the issue. It's the wrong size, and I don't have any others with this 90-degree configuration, so... I think what I'm going to have to do is just put this one back in just for show and I'll replace this fuel line and do one continuous line right from the fuel filter to the tank and I'll add an inline one right there. Okay, so I just reinstalled this cover. Originally, I was thinking I was going to put this valve back in just for show, but decided to leave it out. It's just going to be confusing to anyone operating this machine if there's two shutoff valves. So I'm going to install the new valve right about there. Okay, well it looks good. Guess we'll throw some fuel in the tank and see how we make out. Yeah, plenty of oil. You can see it right there. It actually doesn't look too bad.
Okay, not bad at all. It actually would not start on choke. I tried once on full choke, then half choke, and then the third pull was choke off, and it started right up. Now, the engine speed is a bit fast. It was at 63 and a half with no load. And under load, 3,000 watts, it settled down to about 61 and a half. So the engine does need to be slowed down a bit, which isn't a big deal. Actually, it's just backing this screw out right here a few turns. So I will start it again, dial that back to about 61 and a half under no load. I also did check this meter here and all the functions seem to work fine and only 80 hours on this machine. So not bad. Definitely have a good machine here. Really not a lot to do other than adjust that governor, clean it up a bit and I guess change the oil and get that battery ordered. Okay, ran out of time the other day, had to cut things short. Anyway, I put in an order for a bunch of stuff, including the battery. And while I'm waiting for that battery, I thought I would just try charging this one up. They do come back sometimes, and this one is showing signs of life. Right now, I do have it set up on a six amp charge, and it is taking close to four amps into the battery. So. It is showing signs of life. Now, I'm sure it is severely sulfated, so whether or not this thing will actually produce enough amps to be useful, I don't know. If I unplug it, which is hard to do with one hand, the light is staying lit, but it did dim. Let me just show you the difference here. That's plugged in and unplugged. And you can see the voltage is now dropping very quickly. So. This battery does not have enough charge in it currently to do anything. So I'm going to let it bake for a bit longer on the charger, see if we can't get it charged up and possibly use this battery. Okay, well, the good news is the battery took a charge. It's sitting at 13.3 volts and it cranks the engine without a problem. So. Battery is good. Now, a lot has happened. It's actually been a week since I charged this up. And in that time, we got a tropical storm and I sold every generator I have. And of course, after the last one went, I got a call from a neighbor asking if I had one he could use. And this was the only one I had. So I did a quick oil change, sent it out, and he used it for about a day. We have power back now, obviously, so it's back in the garage, but he did uncover a couple issues. First, and not too significant, was that this idle down button does nothing. So we'll dig into that a bit. But more importantly, although this thing ran perfectly when it was running most of the time, it did start acting at times like it was running out of fuel. And it actually stalled about four or five times. So there is an intermittent fuel delivery issue. I'm not sure what it is. I did pull the carb in his driveway, did a quick and dirty on it, and the carb looked great. I really couldn't find much wrong, but I didn't go through it too thoroughly either. So I'll probably pull that carb off again, but before I do that, I did get a boroscope. I want to stick it in the tank now that it's empty and take a look. Maybe there's an obstruction. Okay, so this is the system I bought. It's probably one of the cheapest ones I could find on Amazon. Seems like it's halfway decent. I got it because I like the fact that it could show on a bigger screen like an iPad and you can record the footage so you don't have to see it through the camera to the iPad, you can see it direct. Anyway, let's take a look. And it does have a light. You can see it's not very bright, so I'm just gonna add a little light to it. You can see that's the fuel outlet right there. Looks pretty good. And if I look around here on the bottom, I don't see any issues at all. So I don't think we have an issue inside this tank. I'm gonna pull this fuel line and what I've done a few times in the past, mostly with rusted tanks, is I can run a drill bit in and just see if there's any debris that comes out. Also, a zip tie works well to kind of get around the corner 
and just scrape away anything that might be there. So that's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, nothing came out, so I don't think that's the problem either, but I'll run a zip tie through and just poke it around the corner to make sure. Yeah, and it's coming out clean too, so uh, no problem with the fuel outlet. I don't think the fuel tank or the fuel delivery is the issue. It's got to be the carb or potentially something killing spark. So I'm gonna pull that carb off. It's gonna be no surprises here. I was in it a few days ago. It was kind of in the heat of the moment. Just popped it off in the neighbor's driveway and didn't see anything in there. It was spotless. So, you know, I didn't check everything thoroughly. I didn't pull the emulsion tube. Didn't really test the function of the float. So there's a few things that could still be causing this issue in here. the main jet. the pilot jet. What can I say? This thing is spotless. There's no reason to put this through the ultrasonic. I don't see any clogs, no concerns. So I'm just gonna run wires through all the holes, make sure there's nothing in there, and reassemble.
So really no smoking gun. I have a few ideas on what it could be, but I think I'm just going to have to put this back on, run the machine for a while, load it up, see if we can't reproduce that stalling condition. Okay, so this is the setup. I've got my four heaters out with a 30 amp cord. It's actually two legs, 30 amps on each for a total of 60 amps. And I'm gonna power up two of these heaters, one on each leg, 1500 watts each. If the engine holds without stalling, I'll add probably just 750 watts for each of these other two heaters on the right. And if that holds, I might crank it up to the max which would be 6,000 watts. Now I put a spark tester on here not that we can really see it in this bright light but if it does start to stutter I'm gonna run over here and just check this to see if it's losing spark and also have a camera set up over here pointing at the low oil light. So hopefully we can catch this thing doing what it was doing. Unfortunately it's intermittent so it could be hours before it does it. And I might miss it because these phones are not gonna record for hours. So anyway, let me get this thing started. I wanna start by dialing the governor back to 61 and a half with no load. I'm gonna play around with the switch a little just to see if it works, which I am pretty sure it doesn't. And I'm gonna test the charging system, see if that works.
So as you can probably see, no issues. I loaded it up actually at one point to 6,000 watts, kept running just fine. And the auto idle works and the battery was charging. A little bit high, but it was charging. So now that it's off, you know, it's settled down a bit and that'll keep dropping as time goes on. But the good news is it charges, auto idle works, doesn't seem to be stalling. So I guess the only other thing I can think of is that the main pickup, the main jet is on this side. And this generator is leaning two or three degrees toward that side. So it'll help it if it's a fuel or yeah, like a fuel level issue in the bowl leaning it this way will help it. So I'm gonna straighten it out, maybe tip it a degree or so to the right and try it again. Got it propped up now, about two and a half, maybe three inches. And when checking the level, it is pretty much dead on from left to right. It still actually is back maybe half a degree. So, you know, now the fuel will be kind of tipped away from the main jet but I mean this is how it's supposed to operate nice and level so let's give this a try Interesting. So it just died again. We did actually not lose spark. Kind of hard to tell, but I did touch this and got a little shock. So I don't think spark's the issue. Maybe it is fuel. Can't be anything else. So I just shut the fuel valve off. I'm gonna crack the drain nut, sorry, the drain screw and see how much comes out. Okay, that is not enough fuel to run an engine. So that's why it stalled. At least now we know 100% the cause of the stalling. Now, it kind of surprised me because I'm at no load and it stalled. And earlier I was at a 4,500, 6,000 watt load, no problem. Now, I guess one thing I overlooked is that my neighbor did say it ran perfectly all night when it was cool. Now it's been running for about an hour and it's having trouble and it's in the hot sun. So something's going on. You know, I have worked on Yamahas before that suffered from vapor lock. I don't know if that's the issue here. Potentially the tank vent may not be venting, although I checked to that yesterday. Anyway, I'm gonna pop off the fuel line, test the fuel flow real quick, and go from there. Okay, well there was, this line was empty. So that tells me the carb was taking in the fuel and just none was coming. So let me turn the fuel valve back on Okay, no issues with the fuel flow. I'm gonna crack that cap and see if I hear any pressure release.
nothing. It's been an hour or so since this was brought in and just want to review a few things real quick before I dig in. The carburetors always have a plastic spacer and you can't see it right now because it's kind of under the shroud but when I took the carb off originally that spacer started sliding out with it. It's about an inch thick and the sole purpose of that is to prevent heat soak from the engine you know transferring to the carburetor causing it to vapor lock inside the carburetor. So I, I don't think that's the issue as far as the carb goes, because when I popped the line off, there was no fuel coming out of the line either. So it's not like it was here trying to get in. It wasn't even here. So a few things here on the design of this, which isn't very good. I guess first off, right there, the fuel line comes up to about that high. And it's hard to see, but that's about the bottom right here is how high that line gets. So you can see it exits down here. So when the fuel drops to about here, the engine's going to stall and run out of gas. And actually, I'm about at that level right now. So that's one issue. The other issue is that the line comes over here. It's a really long line. It takes a turn, comes over that hump and then down and that area is a problem also having this filter here might not be the best thing either because that kind of acts as a reservoir holding the heated fuel even longer before it goes in the engine so you know feeling the fuel line now after an hour it's cool here but it's hot well warm right there and it's cool over here so I think most of the heat soak is happening probably under this shroud. That's not helping things. And the stator vents are right there. So this area does experience some heat. Now on the other side, there is a heat shield. So most of the exhaust heat should be coming out. Also the heat from the engine comes out here and also mostly exits on this side. So. I don't think that's an issue per se. It's just the fact that it's a hot day. It was 85 degrees Fahrenheit. We have ethanol fuel, 10%, which lowers the boiling point. And I guess the last thing is the, the gas that's in here, my neighbor put in. I don't know anything about it, but there's different blends where I live. There's a winter blend and a summer blend. If you put a winter blend in there, then that also increases the likelihood of vapor lock. So there's a number of possibilities here that could be causing this issue, but ultimately this route coming down low, kind of getting trapped in here and then coming back up with a reservoir is not the best idea. So I'm gonna move that fuel filter way back here somewhere. And then this line here, haven't quite figured it out. I initially thought I would drill a hole here, zip tie it here, and then shoot it over to the carb. And that just keeps the whole thing a lot lower. It also avoids this hut area kind of in here. The thing I don't like about it is that this is still a cage for heat. So ideally I would actually route it on the outside here and around. Now that's not gonna look so good, but that would probably work the best. So I'm gonna think about this a little before redoing the plumbing. Yeah, I'll turn you back on when I figure it out. Okay, got a game plan. I reviewed how Subaru does this on the rigid Subaru version of this generator. And Subaru took a very different approach I don't know if it's Subaru or Rigid, but whoever designed the Subaru version did it differently. Instead of going up this huge hill, putting a fuel filter here, and then going over the engine, the Subaru one comes out and over the edge of the blower housing, kind of the outside edge. There's a clip here holding the fuel line in place, and then they put the 90 degree fuel valve right here. And then straight shot back to the fuel tank, and the fuel filter was actually where the fuel shutoff is now. So. I like that idea. It solves several problems. It gets rid of the hill. 
going over the engine and this reservoir of hot fuel. So I think that's our best bet. The only catch is I have to drill a hole here. And there's not a lot of room because there is a solenoid here for the idle control and some wires here for the switch. So most likely I can put the hole right about there, secure the fuel line with this bracket and hopefully problem solved. Okay, I drilled a little pilot hole here. I'm just gonna drill it out. I'm not sure exactly what size this is, but I'd say it's probably about three quarters of an inch. That'll work. I sanded this down just with some 300 grit sandpaper. Just wanna make sure there's no rough edges. Anyway, I'm gonna reconnect this. There's really no wrong way to do it. They have these kind of keyed in such a way that they can only be plugged in the right way. And the wires for the idle switch, it doesn't matter which way they go. It'll work either way.
perfect. Ready to give this thing another try. It's actually hotter out today. It is 92 degrees Fahrenheit, 88% humidity. So this will be a good test. Uh, you may have noticed I did swap out this fuel line with a clear one so I can see if we're running into fuel problems before we actually stall. You can see it's full of fuel except for that little air bubble right there. So that's kind of the starting point. I also turned this valve around. The Subaru actually have it, has it facing forward. It doesn't really matter, but I just wanted it to look original. And I did find footage of me working on another Yamaha MZ360, and it was set up exactly this way. I think the only difference is they had the clamp on this hole here on the top holding the fuel line, so it still kind of came up the hill. I think I like this one better like this, but either way, it's it's easy to move it up here if I decide to do that. But uh, this is a different revision, obviously, with the idle down control. And because of that, they routed the fuel differently as well. So anyway, enough talking. Let me get this thing started. I'm going to run it at 3000 watts for about an hour and then idle it down and see what happens. Okay, I think I've seen enough. It almost stalled, but it didn't. And you can see this line, it's, it's completely empty. I mean, how this thing is running, I mean, it must just be trickling gas, running on fumes. So it's just a matter of time. You can see it is starting to build up a little bit right there, but very slowly. And this isn't gonna hold out. Now, the line itself is quite cool in the front, so I'm not concerned about that at all. I think the issue is more back here. The stator is putting out a fair amount of heat, and I'd say it's the hottest right here where the vents are on the stator. It's actually still fairly warm on this side, but it's the warmest over here. So clearly my attempt I'd say failed. Maybe it works a little bit better, but I don't have too many options left here other than routing it. I don't know. I really don't want to make the line any longer. So I think I'm gonna look into getting some insulation or insulated fuel line and try that out. All right, so this is what I came up with. This is the original line here. And you can see the fuel filter is a good nine or 10 inches from the tank outlet. On the new line, I put it quite a bit closer. So that'll basically take this filter out of the stator vent area. And also I got this insulation here, which just slides on the line. So what I'm gonna do is get some shrink tubing and basically shrink it on either end just to get a nice tight seal and I'll try running with this. Okay, 
Okay, all set up again. I've got the insulated fuel line on and it's about the same temperature out today as it was the first time I experienced vapor lock. It's 85 degrees. Now it is partly sunny, so not exactly a fair test and the humidity is lower, but it's the warmest day in the foreseeable future. So I'm gonna run this for an hour, come back and see what we see as far as air goes. But right now there's only this little bubble right there. Okay, so, so much for insulation. And, you know, I think I really have no choice but to route this somewhere else. You know, it's just too low in front of the stator vent and I'm going under here just isn't working. So I'm gonna come up with something else. Okay, this is plan B. I got this temporarily rigged up, but this is a pulse style fuel pump that you'd find on a tractor. The way it works is fuel in, fuel out. And then this is where you get the pulse from the engine. Now, this setup's a little different as far as how I'm getting the pulse. I've watched a few videos on how people do it. And most people say you just got to drill a hole in the case and put a fitting there to get a good pulse. I've seen another person that actually took the pulse directly from here, which is a bad idea because the engine has to breathe. And in this case, this is teed off, so the engine can still breathe, but theoretically a pulse will also go this way. And originally that was connected to the fuel tank vent, but now I have a hose running over here to the pulse port on the pump. So I'm gonna put some gas in the tank. I'm curious if this is still gonna gravity feed through the pump. And then I wanna do a test cranking the engine and see if the pump can actually pump the fuel above the level that's in the tank. Okay, and it does look like it's gravity feeding a little bit. So that's good. So the fuel in the tank, it's only half a gallon, so it's way down here. I'm gonna hold this hose about an inch above the top of the tank, crank the engine some more and see if the fuel can advance up. Okay, good. Do it a little more. Okay, I don't want to kill the starter or the battery, but this is good. The pump's definitely working. I mean, the fuel level in the tank's quite low. It's probably corresponds to right about here. So the pump was able to pump it about half a foot above the level of the fuel in the tank. So that's good. It tells me the pulse is strong enough when the engine's cranking to actuate that pump. And I'm sure once the engine's going, it's only gonna pump a lot faster and better. So this is promising. I'm gonna finish the temporary plumbing, bring it out and try it for real. Long story short, this did not work. I mean, it worked, but when I tested it earlier, I cranked the engine like three or four times and the fuel only advanced about six inches above the level of the fuel tank. And I was trying to justify it in that once the engine was running up to speed, it would pump better, but it didn't. After running it for about 15, 20 minutes, I could tell the pump was not keeping up and it was gonna run out of fuel. And I even pulled this at one point to check the fuel flow 
and it was anemic. It was barely coming out. So I just shut it off, brought it back in, kind of in disgust, and was about to pull the trigger on getting an electric pump, even though the reviews on most of the electric pumps are pretty bad, but I felt like I had no other option. Anyway, before ordering it, I wanted to check one more thing, and that's basically that this, this is kind of a quarter inch line and the breather over there is three eighths. So I was thinking maybe if I run a larger diameter line, the pump would work better. So I pulled it off the T over there and let me show you what I found. In that T is what looks like a main jet on a carburetor. You can see it reduces the pulse significantly, which I guess kind of makes sense being that the fuel tank vent was going there, but for a pulse pump, that's gonna significantly reduce its ability to pump. So I'm gonna take that out and test the pump again. Yeah, just like a main jet. All right, it's kind of hard to see. Fuel level's right there, which corresponds to the level in the tank. Last time I cranked it three or four times for a total of about 20 seconds to get the fuel to advance about six inches up. Let's see if we can do any better. Much better. So that solves the pulse problem. That pump is definitely gonna do now what it should. Well, it's another beautiful day. It's about 81 degrees Fahrenheit, low humidity, and definitely the coolest day that I've tried testing this. But to be fair, this video is getting long. I've already edited out about three or four failed attempts. And one of those attempts was on a similar day, but cloudy. And we got vapor and it stalled in about 20 minutes. So I have confidence that if it's going to have the problem, it'll have it today. Anyway, some of the things I edited out, just in case you ask, I did run it with the fuel cap off. Still got vapor installed. I replaced the needle and float. Still stalled. I also took the carb back off and checked the vent and shined a light up from underneath into like the vent area. And you could see clearly that it was vented and not blocked. And then lastly, I routed this line, the insulated line, away from the stator vent and took it back over the engine and that made it even worse. So I've exhausted pretty much everything. Hopefully this is the answer.
I'm happy to report two hours later, this thing's running really good. And there's almost no vapor in this line. And what it was actually doing, I mean, it's not that there wasn't vapor still being produced, but as soon as the vapor filled up the line and reached the needle, the pump would just push the vapor right out and fill the line right back up again. So makes me wonder now, all those other rigids I fixed, do they suffer from the same problem? And I have a feeling they do. I mean, rigid did change the design of this tank. They flattened it out and they moved the fuel outlet to the front. So that tells me that maybe they knew something. Anyway, this video has gone on quite long enough, I think. I'm just gonna get this back to the garage, finalize the fuel lines and call it at that point. Okay, get everything finalized here. Just two bolts, one on each side on this cover holding things in place. I used the same line as I made earlier, the insulated line with the fuel filter. And, you know, I did want to relocate that up more toward the front, closer to the car, but there really wasn't a great spot to do it. It just seemed like there was just not quite enough room. So I left it there. And this line here still goes through and then wraps up. I did insulate it partially for heat and also to add some additional abrasion resistance. Now I kept with kind of the original Subaru and kind of the older Yamaha design. I left the fuel valve up here, secured this line in with two clamps and the vacuum line is also finalized. So this thing is pretty much done. I think the only thing left is really just to get a barbed fitting and extend the vent over to the airbox. But you know, this video has gotten quite long, so I'm gonna kind of call it at this point. But I'd be interested to hear, you know, do you have a rigid generator like this? And have you had issues with vapor lock? Hope this video helps someone. Thanks for watching.